That brings our next, next guest, who is Lisa Matheson, another Lisa. Uh, she's the head of brand activation at Hostess, and she's going to share with us her um, omni-channel strategy. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. We're moving from uh, energy drinks to snacks to, to be 20-something again, right? It's, it sounds amazing. Um, I'm Lisa Matheson. I'm head of brand activation at Hostess Brands, and it's nice to see you all today and be with you over the next few days in Charleston. I look forward to getting to talk with uh, each of you a little bit more. Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about omni-channel media planning and buying. We've all heard the buzz phrase of omni-channel marketing. We've even heard it about 20 times this morning. Um, and so I want to really translate that, that idea and that concept into omni-channel media planning and buying. Really help you understand what it is, um, the benefits that we're seeing of that approach, and then give you uh, and leave you with a few tips on where to begin. Um, so the rise of omni-channel marketing. Let's just talk about omni-channel marketing for, for a moment here. Um, you know, it really began a few years ago alongside the initial growth of e-commerce. In fact, it's the growth of e-commerce that I think has really fueled and begun to shape shift uh, the marketing landscape. And so we've all seen these headlines. You know, shopper marketing is now dead. Um, you know, retail media is crashing, the cool kids party, and social, social, and e-commerce are converging. And then you even have, you know, the retailers really stepping up their game and advancing their media technologies and, and trying to bring that in-store experience online. And so with all of this underfoot, you know, what we're really seeing and talking about is the significant shift and a fundamental shift in the ways that consumers are buying groceries today. Um, so pre-pandemic, you've even heard this a little bit from, from Barrett at Innovid, you know, pre-pandemic, consumers were not shopping online for their groceries as much as they are today. In fact, it was only 6% of total grocery sales were actually occurring in the online space. The pandemic then came in and really changed the game. It really helped fuel the e-commerce growth very, very rapidly. And in fact, it's doubled to about 11% or a little bit more than 11% of total grocery sales are now done in uh, the e-commerce or online space. And so the reality is that online grocery shopping is here and it's not going away. And so what we're seeing is that you know consumers just fundamentally got more comfortable with the e-commerce space. The pandemic sort of forced that. When everybody at the height of the pandemic was afraid to go in and into a physical store and buy their groceries for their week or for the next two weeks, they started to really take a look, a hard look at you know buying their groceries online. And so um, it really sort of helped them overcome that initial barrier of online grocery shopping. And so whether they were maybe initially more fearful of where their data was going to go if they were buying online or, you know, how much the products were going to be. They couldn't compare pricing as easily as they could if they were going into stores. Um, the pandemic really helped them overcome that, and we saw a massive, massive uh, group of people come online and get more comfortable with online grocery shopping. And so today, the reality of where we're sitting at is nearly 50% of all U.S. households are shopping for their groceries online. But that doesn't mean that e-commerce or grocery shopping online has kicked out or um, taken over the physical in-store shopping behaviors. Consumers are actually now, what we're seeing is moving fluidly between the two. So they're buying online and they're going in-store. And so we've seen data that says nearly, you know, all, about 97% of grocery shoppers um, have bought online and in store uh, in the past three months. So this is, you know, a, a really large concept uh, to recognize and to understand, especially as a CPG marketer, that the consumer's end game is or end destination is not the physical store anymore. It could be both. They could be buying some online, they could be buying some in store, they could be buying all in store, they could be buying all online and picking up in store. So there's you know, various ways and methods um, for consumers to get 
their groceries today. And we started to take note of these macro consumer shifts and marketplace shifts um, very quickly at Hostess. And we started asking ourselves, okay, what do we need to do? The consumer behaviors are changing, the marketplace is changing, you know, retailers are going online. We need to start thinking a little bit differently about how we intercept that consumer and influence them along their path to purchase. So the question of the day is, are you shifting your marketing to a more omni-channel uh, experience? And are you starting to shift your omni-channel approach to include media planning and buying? And so that led us down the path of really asking ourselves at Hostess, you know, are our consumers changing? If all of these macro trends are, are happening outside and in the marketplace, um, then what are, what's happening to our specific snacking consumers? Um, you know, are there, is the path to purchase to snacking, you know, changing? And certainly when you think about snacking and the snacking landscape, you know, there are a lot of ways, there's lots of types of snacking, if you will. Um, you, can, you can get your, you know, your snacks on the go, you know, that kind of convenient, you just need a, a quick snack on the run, or you're planning for your, you know, your grocery list, uh, you know, a week in advance or the week of, and, you know, snacks are on the list, those snacks that are, you know, staples to your, to your pantry. And so we started really wanting, you know, really curious. We wanted to understand and start with our consumer first. How are their behaviors, how are our specific target consumer behaviors changing? So we partnered with our agencies. Um, actually, Kelly Roberts is here today from Catalyst. She's part of our Group M team. Um, and so we partnered with them to really dig in to understand how our consumer's path to purchase um, to that snacking purchase was changing. And what we found was primarily that our, first and foremost, our consumer journey was actually primarily digital. So if you look at this screen, you'll see that most of these behaviors are completely digital. And that's something that Hostess Brands adopted um, pretty early on in the last couple of years. We are actually a 100% digital marketer. Um, we focus all of our media and planning, uh, media efforts and media mix on the digital channels. And, and this is the reason why. Um, our consumers are really bouncing from, you know, online mobile experiences to social, um, to creating their shopping lists even digitally. They're exploring the e-commerce website, checking prices, checking availability, maybe going into the store to see if, um, you know, if, if they're nearby or grabbing, you know, their pickup order, um, or maybe even looking for, for coupons online. So we know that you know, primarily digital channels are dominating our consumer's path to purchase, but we're also noticing that our consumer's path to purchase is not linear. They are actually bouncing back and forth between a few of these environments, um, you know, along their path. And so what we recognized from all of this is that there are new opportunities and more opportunities to influence and actually enable purchase for our consumers along their journey. So that then opened up the question of, do we need to start to shift our media planning and buying practices? If that's what our consumer is doing and that's where they are and that's how they're behaving, then we need to start to really evaluate our media mix and really start to make some changes um, and incorporate some of these e-commerce, you know, retail media environments and platforms into our media mix. Um, and so we, we, we t really took into consideration that macro intelligence, our own micro intelligence, and alongside of our business school, which is of course always to drive uh, awareness and consideration of our, our fabulous hostess snack products, um, we really set out to learn, you know, does including e-commerce media in our media mix really enhance performance and effectiveness with our consumer target? And so as I mentioned before, you know, Hostess Brands is 100% digital in our marketing efforts. Um, we, have, we have taken that approach primarily because we are just now getting back into advertising um, after several years of hiatus. Uh, we started our first uh, advertising campaign uh, last year uh, with our Live Your Mostest campaign. We actually just uh, relaunched that campaign a couple of weeks ago. And so nationally, and so we're so excited, but what, what digital really gives us is the benefit of agility and immediate learning 
And so, you know, it was, it was really a great opportunity for us to incorporate e-commerce media into our media mix, um, and we could do so pretty quickly. And so as we started to do that last year, um, what we saw is that, you know, outside of our traditional, uh, when, when you compare our traditional digital media mix, so social, um, video, you know, digital banners, and then we added in e-commerce retail media, we, what we found was astounding. You know, despite the fact that e-commerce retail media is a little bit more expensive than standard banners or social media, uh, we actually got a higher return. So when we included e-commerce retail media in our media mix, we found that we got two times the ROAS uh, return, and we also saw that consumers res were responding to our advertising three times as much. So it was far more effective and efficient, despite the higher costs, for us to incorporate e-commerce into our media mix than it was to leave it out. And so it's with this knowledge, um, when we looked back at our 2021 uh, media plans, that we started to rapidly evolve just the way we go to market. Um, and not only did we change the way that we go to market, but we, we actually fundamentally changed how we are structured internally. Um, we actually you know, really made sure that our external agency partners were blended in a way that could effectively bring this concept and this approach to life. Um, and so, you know, it really has taken, you know, several steps for us to really evolve, but first and foremost, it always has started with the consumer, um, and we did set up our organizational structure so that e-commerce media is, is not its own beast, it's not separate. Um, we didn't blend it with shopper marketing, as maybe a, a few organizations are doing today. We actually blended it with our larger media mix. Um, we made sure that our agencies could come together, and we found a great agency to help us do that, uh, really bring all of those channels together so that we could really keep a holistic view on the consumer and make sure that we were ebbing and flowing as they ebbed and flowed between the, the various platforms. And then we made sure that we were always uh, coming to the table with a learning mindset. So we, we measure everything at Hostess, as I'm sure um, other marketing organizations do as well, much like Pepsi, I'm sure, uh, even Colgate. You know, we want to make sure we're going to the table with a learning mindset. So we set out to really understand, you know, where our consumers, what media our consumer is responding to, how they're responding, and then what opportunities we need to, um, you know, take advantage of and optimize and, and then repeat. And so right now in 2022, we are in a repeat year, I'm very happy to say. Um, and so we're really excited to roll out, you know, our, our, fully new omni-channel media planning and buying mix um, in 2022. So I'll leave you with a few questions if you're curious, uh, you know, about how to maybe approach an omni-channel uh, media planning and buying um, uh, mix. So one, you know, really understand how your consumer target has changed. What is their consumer journey? What's their path to purchase? How often are they spending time with these channels? What are they, you know, what's the intent of their visit to those channels? You want to make sure that you're really aligning your marketing messages to that environment and to the consumer's intent to make sure that it's re really re going to resonate with them. What are those primary touch points for them? You know, yes, consumers, you know, just we're all consumers, right? So we're constantly bouncing between devices, whether it be TV or you know, your mobile phone. Um, we're constantly bouncing between devices. But there are devices that you know, you're spending more time with. And so we wanted to make sure that we were optimizing our media mix to capitalize on where our consumers were spending the most quality time and where our message was going to resonate the most. Ask yourself what retailers are most valuable to your business. Um, we, you know, Hostess Brands is, is widely distributed, and so we're very um, fortuitous that way. We have, you know, a number of different uh, channels that we distribute our products through, whether it be, you know, large mass club stores or even, you know, small local convenience stores or grocery stores. Um, we're carried in a variety of, of um, uh, doors, and so we want, really wanted to, you know, focus on the retailers that 
um, are most valuable to our business, of course, but also have the, have the um, technology and the advances in the media space that can, we can really leverage to, to our larger advantage. And then start to really identify you know, the effectiveness of the media mix, really start to test and learn. Um, we saw that in the previous you know, um, presentation with the Pepsi team. You know, test and, and testing and learning is so vital, I think, especially in an environment where things are rapidly changing, rapidly evolving. And so we've really, again, taken that, that um, test, testing mindset um, to the forefront. And we've, you know, I would encourage you really to start to understand and start to isolate what happens when, you know, you isolate your, you know, traditional media mix from a media mix maybe that has um, more retail media included and really understand the performance with and without it and see how it can optimize, you can optimize your media mix going forward. Happy to take questions in the round table, but thank you guys for uh, letting me share this. Uh, thank story. you, Lisa.